We're on the record. Just your story next week. You want to call Dave Shields? Good morning. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. State your name for the record. David Kenneth Shields. Good morning, Mr. Shields. Good morning. Thank you for coming out. Are you a Floridian, Florida resident? Yes, sir. And in which county do you reside? Twenty. And are you within the city limit? Yes, sir. Okay. And how long have you resided in Swanee County? Six years. And you, how long have you resided in Florida? My entire life. Are you married? Yes, sir. And do you have children? I do. And are your children working with you in Swanee County? They do. And what is your occupation, sir? Um, my occupation is uh, kind of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. I am a... Uh, Farmer, organic farmer, is where we're going, moving towards. That's what our main uh, focus is. And also, with network engineering consultant on the side, which allows me to uh, build up the farm. Well, um, what kind of consulting work do you do? Network engineer. I do. A Internet security. network. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. And your organic farming is that of livestock? Yes, sir. And what type of livestock do you keep? We have uh, poultry, we have egg layers and meat chickens that we raise in an organic pasture fashion. Uh, we basically uh, uh, try to mimic their natural environment as much as possible. Uh, we also have uh, swine, uh, you know, a pasture pig operation. Uh, again, trying to simulate, you know, simulate their environment and, and uh, you know, in forest. And we also have uh, a dairy and beef operation as well. Uh, how many acres do you have in Swanee County? Uh, Forty acres. And uh, how much of that is used for your, or if not all, is used for your organic farming business? All of it. Um, I guess with a small exception, we also provide, um, uh, we're a conduit and co-op for many other farms like ourselves. We, we uh, furnish non-GMO verified feeds that we ship in specialty from. Uh, the Ohio and Pennsylvania region. So we supply about 80 to 90 different smaller to medium farms uh, uh, that want to use and operate like we do. Okay. Good. Is there different levels of organic farming? Sure. For your there's, there's, livestock? There's, there's a non-GMO verified, which is really what we opine towards. It's more of a, uh, there's more testing involved. There's more analysis of, of conditions, looking for toxins. Uh, there's organic certified, which doesn't have the same testing. It's more of a, a practice that you follow, but not actual testing. And then there's what we call beyond organic, which is a uh, uh, is where we kind of mix a combination of organic practices with with uh, more you know test and, and and just to be able to verify for our clientele, because you know our clientele are looking for the purest product as possible, you know, and so you can't necessarily get them just organic. So there's a lot we do to, to ensure that. Is it uh, correct then to say that you're trying to uh, elevate the level of uh, product in the organic market? Absolutely, absolutely. Before Sewanee County, did you uh, raise livestock in any other parts of Florida? No, no. This is. I lived in Jacksonville prior. All right. And so uh, you know, we lived in suburban homes. We have six children, so. Uh, you know, we couldn't exactly uh, raise livestock in Jackson, unfortunately, uh, but we've had an interest for a long time. Um, why did you choose Swanee County? Um, the clean air, the clean water, the uh, the environment, uh, it's, it's really in a lot of ways ideal for what we want to do. Uh, uh, there's really not much industry there, and so uh, there's farming, but, uh, you know, for the most part, though, we have really good access to resources, uh, especially clean water resources. Uh, and, and, you know, poultry, you know, very sensitive to toxins if you're trying to do it right. We do everything outdoors. And uh, so clean air was important, you know, so we just wanted to have a nice environment to, to raise our family and our livestock. Okay. You have uh, neighboring farms? I'm sorry? Are there neighboring farms to yours? Yes, yes. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a uh, Bill Burdick and family. Uh, they have also uh, a large family. Uh, they have a uh, 
farm just on the other side of us. He's, they farm at a smaller level right now. They've had a cutback. They had a, uh, a three-year-old child with leukemia that they're currently going through treatments with. So they used to do quite a bit of poultry. They still do to a small degree um, and, um, and cattle, but they're spending a lot of time focusing on their treatments. You said it was a large family? Yes, they have um, currently eight children, and they're expecting number nine this week or next week. Uh, you remember the Walls Coalition, Inc.? I, I am recently, yes. Okay, good. Yes. And, um, why did you join Walls? Do you have any particular reason? Well, yeah. You know, uh, when we first really learned about the impact of a lot of what we were concerned with on the site, um, uh, you know, it was labeled the Hildreth Station, so in a lot of ways it was kind of not in our mind how close it was really going to be to us until we realized that the Hildreth Station was really the O'Brien Station. Uh, and so we started to get more interested and active in researching, you know, what this really meant for us, our family, our farm, and our livelihood. And uh, considering the proximity, it's going to be, you know, within less than a half mile of our, of our home. What, what was going to be you know, what, less than half a mile of your home? The compressor station, the proposed compressor station. Is there a name for that station? It is called the Hildreth Station that's going to reside in O'Brien. So, um, in any case, um, and I think a lot of people were kind of, uh, when they looked at a lot of the maps proposing the compressor site, being called the Hildreth site, Hildreth is a very small area on the, uh, right there off the 27, not many people live in that area, and so I suspect I don't know if it was accident or what, but it wasn't. If it was called the O'Brien composer site, I think it probably would have had more attention. You actually um, class with speculation. I understand. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, but uh, I'm sorry. I, I kind of uh, well, about how far away is? Uh, it's a Brian. Okay, so the the, the property. Proposed, line, uh, let me finish, sir. Okay. The proposed compression site from your property. Okay, it's approximately uh, about two thousand. And how far away is it from the town that it is named after? Um, the core or the center of O'Brien is probably about, uh, I'd say about three miles by the bird plot. Right. Uh, to move up in the next level of organic farming, do you need to uh, test your water toxicity? Absolutely. I mean, you, you kind of have to, um, you, you kind of need to show that the resources that you have available to you are, are clean and pure. You know, it's, um, it's a, the, the type of farming we do is a, is a very uh, direct relationship with our customer base. They come on site to our farm to inspect what we do. So they want to see for their own eyes how we feed animals, how we take care of animals, the environment we're in. You know, and it's, it's a know your farmer type of mentality. So when you say your customers, you're referring to those who purchase poultry at wholesale? Absolutely. People that purchase, well, our products, absolutely. Okay, we, products. we have a limited poultry license where we can sell uh, uh, poultry meat and eggs to our customers directly. Do you invite them to your operation or uh, do they uh, insist? Uh, no, they, uh, they, well, they will, they will come by request and we invite them. We always have an open invitation. It's kind of an open door policy for the purpose of transparency for our customers. Do you currently text, uh, test water toxicity? Yes, we do. How about ear toxins? Do you test for that at this time? We haven't had the injection new. relevance. It's not an issue in this proceeding. And, and actually, Your Honor, it, I mean, I let the questioning go for a bit to see if he was going to get back to, to the pipeline, but there's nothing in the petition challenging the ancillary structure such as the compressor station. The material facts in dispute are the ultimate uh, issues of fact that are in the petition all relate to the pipeline, not facilities. It's separate. But we have to get to impacts. Okay. It's not visual impact. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ron. Uh, the next level up of the type of form you do without require testing your quality. Objection. I just made the objection of relevance. I sustain that because this is not a permit that deals with air quality. All right. Um, okay. Uh, from your perspective as a business owner in Swanee County near the proposed pipeline and this compressor, uh, uh, how do you think it may, uh, I, 
adversely or perhaps positively affect your operation. Objection, foundation, and calls for expert opinion. Asking with regard to his own farming business. He's making a, he wants a water quality opinion. I would, be, I would uh, move past the water quality question. Your Honor, if I may. Uh, well, I, I said earlier, yesterday, that it's not concerns that are relevant. It's actual impact. So that generally has to be established by an expert witness. A non-expert can tell you all day long about their concerns, but they can't establish that these concerns will actually come in, you know, the actual harm they're concerned about will actually occur. You know, it's the expert that has to show that that will happen. So at this point, though, I feel like you got to answer the question about your concerns because I don't even know the connection yet between his use, um, you know, I don't know where, how it's going to be tied together. If it's not going to be air, is it a well? You know, what is it? What is it? With the compression about. station, I believe, is, is what proximity to your land? It's 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. The, um, is, you're concerned about it, uh, a, well, a spill? Well, Your Honor, if, if I may elaborate. Um, I just, I'm just looking at you, and I'm okay. asking, are you concerned about a spill? I'm concerned about emissions. A uh, uh, big part of our business is poultry. Poultry, I like the analogy of the canary in the mine, is a very sensitive animal to air emissions. Uh, the site is scheduled to have a 20,500 horsepower uh, turbine uh, engine driven by the, the uh, gas on the line. And uh, there are initial studies, which I believe one is an exhibit, that indicate uh, that there is significant concern that uh, residences within a mile of these sites uh, can experience issues with air toxicity. Your Honor, I would just simply note that Sable Trail has already applied for and obtained a final air permit, and there were no challenges. Yeah, there's more than one permit involved in this uh, process, I mean, for this pipeline project. And this permit doesn't involve the air emissions. And the question about whether the air emissions are harmful meat requirements is it would have to have been in a different form. With regard to the uh, that horsepower rating you gave, yes. Uh, do you think having a compressor in that proximity will affect your uh, lifestyle? I'm fairly certain it will. As an objection, as a again, are you just going to roll in the air? I'm asking how the, how the livestock would react to a compressor. Uh, what I mean is, are you? We, we ruled out air emissions. Now, what are you? Asking about um, noise? Yeah, I, I'm asking about noise. And, and, uh, if, if it's going to be nuisance issues, I'd again argue relevance. Nuisance issues aren't within the scope of the approval permit. Unfortunately, that's, that's true. The, uh, I mean, unfortunately, it is a fact that this permit involves certain criteria that have to be met, and the case is about whether those criteria are met, and those criteria do not include. Um, noise, air emissions, and that kind of thing. But it is, I understand that, and I understand that, that, that those are nuisances. But they adversely affect his trade, his ability, his liberty right to earn money, his ability to farm on a land he bought to conduct the farm on. And we're here to find out how uh, an affected owner may be substantially affected. Your Honor, even if we got past the, the, the question well, of relevance, relevance. It, I'm, my ruling is it can't be heard. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Did you purchase your farmland? Yes, we purchased in partnership with uh, a, a friend of ours and partner in the farm. Okay. Did you? Uh, have to erect buildings and structures, or were they already there? It was, it was extremely uh, uh, 
well, typical Florida Highland. There was nothing there. That's why we bought it. It was fallow. You know, we didn't want anything that had been previously farmed. So in addition to the purchase of the land, did you purchase any improvements? Uh, yes. Yes, we sure did. Uh, we purchased a home, and uh, we built structures for support of our farming uh, operation. Have you re uh, covered a return on that investment yet? We're beginning to have a return on that investment. Yes. I have another further for Mr. Sergio. Just a question, Your Honor. You said you recently became a member of Walls. How recently? As of this month. This month? Yes, sir. <coughs> so the last <coughs> probably two to three weeks. It was the, it was the Lake City FERC meeting that I saw John give testimony about the project and about the organization. And uh, I didn't realize a group like that existed. Okay. Until then, so I became a member. So you joined months after the petition of this proceeding was filed? Yes, sir. And do you pay membership dues? I do. And what do you pay? We pay 100 a year. And how long is your membership good for? One year. Thank you. You said the, the presentation was 2,000 feet for your property. Is that an estimate that you made? No, that's that's it's probably likely less than that if you go from the property line of the, of the parcels purchased to the property line uh, were separated by a balance, 1,400 feet, property line to property line. That estimate more of their property line to my front door. Thank you. No further questions? Judge, I don't have any. You mentioned you heard uh, John's speech. Yes, sir. And, uh, how, uh, in what way did that encourage you to join the World <coughs> Coalition? Objection, Your Honor, realm was sustained. One last question. Mr. Shields, any sequels on your property? Yes. Objection. That's beyond my cross. Any what? Sequels. I'll allow it. There is. There's? Yes. And there's there's also a uh, sinkhole at the edge of the easement where the pipeline is to cross. All right. Thank you. Nothing further. Any follow-up? No, you're Thank you.